Welcome you all uh, to our panel discussion on high impact secret that are accelerating growth for e-commerce. My name is Kirti and I am host for this event. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce today esteemed panelists. First, we have Chand Ajmera from Shopify, lead strategic partnership in India, developing new business and product partnership opportunities and programs. In these years, Shopify has powered uh, over 10 leg business across the globe. Next, we have Rohin Mittal, co-founder and director of AdYogi. AdYogi is an enterprise marketing SaaS platform for e-commerce brands to boost online sales via digital spend optimization on platforms like Facebook, Google, etc. Rohin is currently working with 100 plus SMEs to provide them constant growth with the help of marketing automation through AdYogi. Last but certainly not the least, we have uh, Gaurav Gupta, co-founder of Shipway Technology Private Limited. Shipway is the shipment tracking and automation system catering to e-commerce brands having a focus to provide the post-shipping experience to the buyers. They have trusted with over 10,000 plus brands across the globe and also have developed products like easy slips and for complete e-commerce back office automation and fraud prevention. So it's a great privilege and welcome you all today do not hesitate to ask your questions under q a section we will try to address all your questions across the session so starting with chand ashmera so chand can you tell me how important are the factors such as ui ux product page optimization for improving conversation scope your tips to your listener yeah thanks thanks so much kirti for the introduction hey hi welcome everyone hope which will help you grow your business. Um, so coming back to Kirti's question, you know, like this is a, this kind of uh, pressing concern or issue which is usually being raised by brands that, you know, to what extent should, should I focus on my user experience or um, even uh, optimizing my entire website, right? Um, and just imagine that you are spending like a lot of money on your Facebook, Instagram ads and uh, you're getting visitors to your website, but they don't convert. Right now, there can be multiple reasons. Maybe like they found a better product um, on another website or from another brand, or um, they're just looking to buy the product later, right? Or they are not okay with product prices. Um, but along with this, one of the major factors that plays a very important role is also the user experience of your website, right? Um, now, I'm not talking about like you should really focus on building or providing the user experience which the marketplaces of the world like Amazon and Flipkart have been providing you. I'm not even talking about like, you know, going to that extent. Like I have interacted with some brands who constantly focus only on improving their user experience and just miss out on a lot of other important things that need to be taken into consideration. So it's not about that. It's just that even if you focus on those minor tweaks or hacks um, um, on different pages of your website, right, that can also play a very important role in helping you improve your conversion score. So just those minor tweaks, okay? It's like one of one one of those tweaks would be that you make sure that whatever like product information or description that you have is being kind of communicated at the top of the page about the fold. And that too, like in a much concise manner. I'm not talking about like giving entire details uh, on the top of the page. You can always include like detailed description, specification, everything at the bottom of the product page. Um, similarly, like, you know, if you if you are into say beauty and cosmetics, if you have certain products uh, where it's very important to kind of showcase how to use those products, do include those videos. Like I know this brand Plum Goodness on every page of their web on every product page of their website, they usually have these how to use videos or even say reviews from certain experts, beauty experts, or say influencers out there who have been vouching for that product. That definitely helps. Like if I see that video, I'll definitely go ahead and buy that product. Right. Second is um, another hack would be just keeping your call to action, like, you know, a sticky button. So for example, add to cart or, uh, or say buy now button on your product page. If it's kind of sticky, I know that the next step is I have to just click on these buttons. Um, 
thought would be kind of say um, having live having live chat on your website right on the key pages of your website at least so that any questions that these businesses or these visitors have they can definitely interact these live chat can be like autobots or say it can also be manned by like your support executive um another one is just like i ha- i i was just going through this website before our webinar and i saw that on the product page they have the sticker which is like 11 or 15 pro- customers are currently viewing this product that just builds trust and credibility and that also helps kind of you know create that sense of urgency so that's also very kind of you know again a small hack which can help you improve your conversion score um which another thing which i have seen is say um you know there there are these brands who have received badges or um certifications from known organizations in the art industry and they usually add that onto the product page or say um communicating clearly about the return policies shipping policies delivery timelines via icons just like three or four icons on your product page which talks um about all your like you know delivery operations that again can help you kind of you know improve your conversion score so these small small changes um can go a long way um to ensure that you're not losing out on your conversions one more would be sometimes products are out of stock and you need to get those products back in stock so there are these uh, um, you know back in stock alerts which happens that a customer can just say notify me when the product is back in stock they enter their email id and the next thing is whenever the product is back in stock they automatically automatically get notifications so these are like sm- some some of those uh, sorry hacks which can you know will will go a long way i'm happy if anyone else wants to add more to this yeah okay okay thank you and why should we over other e-commerce and magic um i'm actually like you know the way shopify's philosophy is that we usually don't compare with other platforms and we even don't want to like you know enforce any particular platform onto the end customer right like it's it's the customer's ultimate choice to make the right decision but what i can share is that there are few factors or say few things that you as a business need to keep in mind while you are kind of you know choosing the right e-commerce platform like from my experience i have consulted more than what 1000 brands now in my last 3 years at shopify and um usually brands come to me and they share their challenges concerns about the issues that they face on their current e-commerce platform and why they want to migrate um one of them would be um issues with stability security scalability of the website right whichever platform you are choosing ensure that it's 100% secure it's scalable it grows with you you know like while your business grows even the platform grows with you and another thing is stability that's you wouldn't want like you are spending on marketing um uh, advertisements and you have visitors on your site you don't want your website to break right that's that's the bad experience that you are giving so uh, and today you are having like 100 visitors on your website tomorrow you are having like 1 million visitors on your website still the platform should support that kind of growth um second is just like how easy it is to go to market or say to launch any new feature if i'm new uh, to my entire e-commerce kind of world i want to i'm launching my website for the first time ensure that you know you are able to go live in like less less than a week also and whenever you are you want to constantly kind of update or upgrade any particular feature on the website that should happen fast it shouldn't be that you are too much like you know dependent on your tech team or say like it's take it's it's a time consuming task or has like too many complexities no no say no to those platforms another is maintenance like what kind of maintenance is required by uh, by, by a particular platform right is it kind of you have to hire uh to three or four four tech team members who are just constantly focusing on maintaining your website no say no to that gone are those days um you, nowadays it's just a lean team of max two or three people who are managing end to end e-commerce website operations so that's what you need to keep um in mind and um last but not the least just ensure like just check if that particular e-commerce platform is keeping up with the latest trends right like is it growing is it evolving its product offering um on a daily basis um right just to kind of you know ensure that whatever is happening out there in the market those kind of features functionalities are also being offered by the platform and what kind of growth tools are being offered by the platform how well is it integrated with facebook instagram google analytics 
um, Pinterest and a lot many other social channels. So you need to keep that in mind along with the support that any brand uh, that a particular platform can provide. So some of these things you need, you keep that in mind, um, accordingly evaluate, like, you know, tick mark against what is provided by what platform and just choose a platform that is able to kind of, you know, address each of these needs. Okay. Uh, so, uh, can you talking about Cat Yogi and does it work? Over to Rohin. Yeah, uh, sorry, voice was a little blurred. I assume the question is uh, uh, how does Cat Yogi work, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us something okay. about Cat Yogi yeah, and how okay, it works. Okay. So, I'll give you the uh, the biggest IP of what we've developed at Cat Yogi. Uh, uh, it, it's a very simple funnel approach. Uh, what we try and do is basically understand a lot of numbers and data points and uh, e-commerce funnel is pretty straightforward in terms of you start with ads uh, typically on social media and all uh, you get clicks uh, those clicks land onto your uh, category or the product pages from there uh, you have uh, multiple product page views and then add to carts uh, then few steps for the transaction rate in terms of uh, adding your address and making the uh, credit card payments or cod and then finally an order confirmation page now, if you track a conversion rate of a good website, it varies typically from a two to four percent uh, conversion rate. Uh, what happens is that the remaining 96 or 97 clicks who get dropped out in the funnel, we just try and understand what kind of time have they spent on the website and uh, what kind of products were they looking at, how close were they to the funnel in terms of uh, closing the transaction. And on that basis, with a, a better understanding of how your Facebook and Google platforms work, we try and fine tune the campaign. And uh, uh, what we uh, what we do at IUV is purely performance marketing. So when I say performance, it means that every amount of money that I spend is towards uh, generating incremental sale on the website. Uh, so we don't take up branding or let's say like or share campaigns, but uh, everything is rooted to generate more sales. So that in nutshell is what IUV is all about. Okay. Thanks. And uh, there are several platforms across the internet today. So how do you differentiate Ad Yogi and others? A uh, few, few things. Uh, one is that uh, on both the sides, uh, let's say one is the demand side and the other one is the supply side. Supply side is the publisher side, which is Facebook, Google, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, there you need to have a very good understanding of how the algorithms work. Uh, so it's not simply, uh, let's say if you're spending hundred dollars and getting a sales worth $500, you can't just simply add, let's say $10,000 to that campaign and expect a $50,000 sale. Uh, so understanding how these platforms work, uh, in a platform, there are multiple variables that you have, uh, you have creative section, uh, then you have communication uh, section in terms of whether you're running a sale, how effective is your marketing. Uh, creative play is a very big role in terms of uh, how does how does your product look like to the end user uh, and there are multiple formats so you can have a insta story or a video or a carousal or a or even a video carousal now canvas ads so there are multiple permutations and combinations in terms of what is being shown to the end user uh, and then on the other side you have audience segmentation Audience segmentation is typically, let's say, uh, people who have engaged with your brand, people who have never engaged with your brand, uh, and uh, people who have converted on your website as customers. So you'll follow different strategies for uh, multiple buckets of people who uh, either are watching your ads or are interacting with your website. Uh, so what we try and effectively do is that we play within the rules of Facebook, Google, Instagram, YouTube, the larger platforms where majority of the spends go. Uh, just a simple example, let's say uh, Facebook has its own learning and efficiency curve as well. So the moment you tweak budgets by more than 20%, the Facebook efficiency comes back to zero and starts from scratch. So unless, let's say, uh, an account manager who knows this kind of a rule uh, is trying to increase budgets, might end up actually harming the ROI rather than adding to it. So, uh, so that is one. And secondly, we never try to compete with Facebook and Google. We try to build automation and optimization on top of these platforms. So whatever new changes these platforms roll out, there's an added data layer on top of these platforms by IDUD, which helps us to monetize the campaigns. And third, there's a strategic alignment in terms of uh, goal setting. We typically sit with clients to understand, let's say, what is the revenue target for a client by December 2020 or March 2021. So we align a roadmap in terms of that uh, at 
keeping the that uh, solid number in mind uh, which is the target for december how do we plan our scale up or let's say how do we plan our inventory or discounts so that we achieve those numbers with a very efficient uh, roi on the spends so uh, those are the few things where kind of uh, we've seen uh, good successes and clients relying on adobe for uh, passing on their ad spends and uh, that has worked very well for us so far okay so uh, god can you tell me how are you simplifying e-commerce operation through the use of technology over to god actually you are muted uh, god you are muted i'm sorry hi hello everyone so at shipbay we are focused on like uh, having merchants deliver an excellent post shipping experience as well as helping them automate their complete back office operations so uh, we have like two primarily tools like one is shipbay where we uh, like help them uh, make uh, deliver an excellent post shipping experience like by providing uh, branded tracking pages uh, shipment tracking notifications and uh, customer delivery issues alerts and uh, measuring the satisfaction of the customers uh, using the nps scores and uh, uh, some analytics to track the carrier delivery performances and some seamless brand and tracking pages so that you don't have to put any code on your website and it directly uh, your customers can come and track their shipments or they can track their shipments easily from sms whether it is a uh, forward shipment or a reverse pickup so they get customers they get notifications so uh, in order to reduce the customer queries and deliver a better customer experience and and, uh, and the next another product is easy slips where we help uh, merchants to automate their uh, back office operations uh, like uh, by providing a complete fulfillment automation solutions uh, uh, for example uh, you can uh, uh, do the automatic allocation of tracking numbers Uh, with the with respect to weight or uh, service types of the carriers or zip codes or prices and uh, uh, invoices and accounting helping them manage the invoices and accounting part as well and uh, then we have returns automation in this so that you can automatically schedule return pickups uh, with the carriers and then we have ndm management where you can uh, Uh, call on on the where you can send notification on the undelivered orders and get the correct address or uh, get the correct uh, uh, delivery address or uh, any other information automatically from the customers and passing it on to the carriers uh, automatically and uh, we also provide uh, a fraud detection uh, uh, platform uh, tool like Uh, where you can easily uh, see uh, this customer has ordered uh, placed uh, these much orders and out of these uh, 90% are the rdo so you should not ship uh, orders to those customers or you can convert those customers to prepaid orders uh, and uh, alerts like uh, this um, the address is incorrect and you should not ship on these addresses so we are covering uh, like a lot of things where you can automate uh, complete uh, back of uh, your operations and uh, to be able to run your e-commerce uh, very in a very efficient and uh, in a lean manner so you can process thousands of thousands of order with a team of small team of 5 to 6 people okay and uh, what is your opinion on customer experience and uh, what are the brands should uh, do improve the post purchase experience or so uh, so when we talk talk about customer experience is uh, customer experience is equivalent like uh, the number is inversely proportional to the uh, number of times the customer has to reach out to the customer support so nowadays like uh, if we talk about shopify so shopify is helping merchants do it everything on uh, to do everything on their own so the same thing you should do that to the your customers so that your customers can track that they can uh, uh, place a return or they can play uh, place a exchange request so everything uh, from the links or the panel itself instead of reaching your customer support again and again so in uh, so, uh, so the uh, you have to reach basically uh, to the customers before before they have to reach you so for example 
so whenever there the order is shipped you should uh, send notification like this and link so that they can track the order any time from that tracking link and whenever there is a delay in the order they should know that uh, the uh, the order is delayed and uh, it's delayed due to this much reason maybe due to floods or any other uh, reason maybe delayed from the carrier so that it reduces uh, or calms the anxiety of the customers and uh, you can uh, uh, instead of when whenever there is a ret uh, return or replacement order the customer should uh, get notification like the your order is uh, out for pickup or your order has been scheduled and uh, uh, it's uh, it will be picked up at this time plus uh, once the order has been picked up or the exchange order has been shipped or you they should also get proper notifications and uh, whenever the refund has been processed uh, you should also notify in that case so these are small small things where you should uh, help uh, like uh, in, you should improve the post shipping experience of your customers so that it it, it has to benefit it it uh, one is it will uh, give you a repeat customers it will give you a brand advocates and uh, another is uh, it will also help you reduce your customer uh, customer support cost okay uh, thanks for uh, now come to the q and a section so our first question is for uh, gora so question is that what is the most important thing you want uh, that you want to see brand to focus on sorry um, got a uh, question is that what is the most important thing that you want d2c brands to focus on okay so uh, uh, okay okay so as we know uh, like uh, nowadays like uh, a uh, lot of uh, the trend is of d2c brands uh, because everyone is now trying to sell it directly to the customers and the major benefit uh, that we have of uh, like selling it directly to the customer is uh, like you can closely monitor your customers and you can uh, target uh, your customers directly instead of uh, selling it via some other uh, distributors or other retailers so and uh, the most important factor that it, that actually helps is that that you can uh, easily get the feedbacks from the customers and that is the most important step in building a brand because brands are basically brands become brands because they listen to their customers and they shape their uh, products they introduce new products on the basis of the uh, uh, the feedbacks that has been given by the customers so taking feedback is something i feel is really uh, highly important uh, if we can uh, if we are able to do that and how we can monitor that and improve and evolve as per the needs of the customers so that uh, this is a must have step in order to build a d2c brand okay uh, thank you gaurav now next question is for uh, rohin so the question is that is the product available across Multiple e-commerce platform like Shopify, etc. Yes, uh, the Adobe product is uh, actually integrated with uh, a lot of platforms. So uh, Shopify being one of them, the largest of the lot that we have, and uh, all other platforms like uh, WooCommerce, uh, Magento, BigCommerce, Adobe is plus. And in case of custom websites, also there's a manual integration that happens, but uh, we are able to integrate that as well. Okay, all right, all right, Rohan. Next question is for uh, uh, Chan, and the question is that how to increase the visibility of a website with the least investment in advertisement? Over to Chan. Great, yeah. So I, I I would say that you don't need to kind of say um, spend on paid marketing. Um, obviously, that's something which is going to definitely help you get sales uh, while you're starting. but uh, your goal should be that slowly and gradually like you know you are able to get like generate lot of organic traffic on your website right and that happens in long term but at the same time efforts should start kind of you know kicking in during the initial um, few months of launch only so like few things which you can do which are like again very simple easy um, to implement solutions which is one is 
um, just like you know focus on your content and blog strategy i mean i know that you might think that oh i don't have a content writer in house i need to kind of you know hire a writer for me to constantly churn out blogs and articles um, on a week on week basis no you can just like you know hire some of the freelancers part time freelancers from upwork or from fever um a lot of platforms are available and you can just have them write like even say four max four articles every month right that also kind of plays a very important role to further kind of engage with your audience and to build that fan following um second one would be just like make the best use of these micro influencers um they just like don't charge anything they just take your product and in return they are kind of you know going to share uh, more about your brand and product on Instagram and various other social channels like YouTube and all so definitely make use of micro influencers as much as you can i have i have like you know heard from so many brands that when they launch um the first like you know the first initial sales that they get along with from paid marketing is from these micro influencers as well um another one would be just make sure that whichever visitors are coming on your website you're capturing some information from them for example even with a pop up which says hey you are eligible for like 5% discount the next time you visit our website enter your email id or say subscribe to our newsletters very important because then you will be able to use these email ids to even build local like audience on facebook as well um so that's again third thing which is very important um um another one is just like while uh, you are kind of you know having your own website you would definitely be building your fan following on instagram and facebook as well so make use of the right hashtags okay um on instagram so that the product discovery happens automatically and you start building your you know you start increasing your fan follow uh, fan follow follower base on instagram on an organic uh, basis um and another is just like make the best use of your network like just uh, promote your brands pro- promote your uh, brand products via your network share it on whatsapp groups facebook groups have a, l- a small referral program which is being launched so that you know the word spreads and then uh, your network is also kind of you know sharing uh, more about your products across within their network as well so referral program obviously i'm not talking about automating your referral program because that is going to take some time but in a simple way that you know you get special discount code when you refer x x particular product to your uh, you know network again that helps um and another is just having some kind of chat buttons like whatsapp chat button on your website so that if i am visiting your website and i have some questions i am chatting with you over whatsapp and through which i am able to capture uh, you know mobile numbers so that again very important because you will then be able to kind of say schedule your sms campaigns or say in future whatsapp marketing campaigns if you have a data of the customers who are coming onto your website um and also google my business listing i i think it's you might feel that it's not relevant or it's not so important but at the time it help, at the same time it helps you a lot in terms of discovery um across like you know google channels so definitely these are like some tips which can you know help you get or say generate traffic um in an organic manner okay uh, thank you so uh, next question is for gorav and question is from sujoy he asked what exactly are the difference between shipway and ship rocket over to gorav so yes sujoy there is a lot of difference actually uh, at sh- uh, ship rocket is basically uh, you have to just uh, tie up with ship rocket uh, and uh, it, they are basically providing the shipping services like for example uh, ship uh, with ship with the help of ship rocket uh, you don't need to uh, open a separate account uh, with all the other carriers and uh, but you can uh, directly make an account with ship rocket and start selling and they will give you the apis or you can also they also have a shopify app so which you can install and start shipping but uh, shipway is basically uh, more like uh, it uh, it's like we have integrated ship rocket as well as you can also use your own direct accounts like uh, when for example uh, like when the when any e-commerce uh, brand st- start getting good number of orders so they generally tend to have like five six accounts or more than uh, that uh, direct shipping accounts and they can also use 
ship rocket and they can use uh, other direct account with blue dot fedex etc as well depending upon their rates and contracts that that they have so uh, so so this is the uh, like big uh, major difference that we have in ship shipway and ship rocket Okay, uh, thanks, Gaurav. All right. So next question is for Rohin, and the question is, uh, how does Ad Yogi help in setting up my market marketing campaigns? Over to Rohin. Okay, so uh, Ad Yogi, uh, once let's say the first time setup is done, uh, then what we try and do is basically create strategies for different types of audience. Uh, first is your uh, cold audience or prospects audience who have never been onto your website for the last six months. Second is your engaged audience, people who have interacted with your ads. Uh, third is your uh, uh, dynamic uh, remarketing audience, people who have seen the product on your website but uh, eventually decided not to buy. And fourth is your customer base. Now, if you go deeper into each of these buckets, you can actually slice and dice a lot of this uh, 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 audience into micro segments. Uh, Typically, uh, what you can do is, let's say you can keep a split of, let's say, high value customers, uh, high frequency customers and uh, touch points of people who generally buy during discounts. So that's one strategy. Uh, then accordingly, you curate your products from the catalog and show those kind of products. So let's say if I'm a, if I'm a buyer of high value products from a particular website, any new fresh launch might make sense for that brand to reach out to me. Uh, similarly, if there's a uh, if there's a price conscious buyer and there's a sale or a flash sale on the website, it might make sense to reach out to that kind of a buyer whenever there's a sale. So across the four segments that I just said, prospects, uh, remarketing, dynamic, and uh, uh, and customer base, we typically try and uh, ensure there is a minimum overlap in each of these audience segments. Uh, because uh, all your platforms, Facebook and Google, uh, if you have an overlap, the cost of advertising increases for a brand. Uh, and on the other, uh, on the other hand of creatives, uh, what we do is we have a lot of A/B testing in-house through the platform. So we have a video creator software inbuilt into Adobe, so you can create multiple videos in uh, uh, multiple lengths, multiple audio formats. Uh, we have a lot of frames and overlays. So for example, let's say 15th August is coming. So there will be a different frame and overlay for the 15th August uh, uh, sale just for to resonate with the customers. And uh, then we try and play and optimize budgets between these uh, 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 these combinations. So let's say if a new launch on uh, 15th August, which is going at a 10% discount is giving us a better ROI, then the platform takes over and starts pushing more budgets towards that ad format and that particular category on the website. So that is how we typically keep collating data and uh, keep refining the campaigns on all of these platforms. Then uh, there are some hygiene factors as well. The moment there's an out of stock product, uh, that product gets removed across all the ads across all the platforms. Uh, now, uh, again, as I said, the budget optimizer, we try and generally play on a daily basis, uh, plus minus 20% of the budget, even if there's any difference in both cases. So those are the kind of things we try and make sure that uh, we are uh, following. And uh, as and when we keep getting the ROI, we start scaling up. And, uh, and, and that's the strategy we typically follow for all the brands. Uh, there might be some finer points around, I would say 20 to 30% of strategy is actually customized and tweaked to every individual brand. But, uh, but largely this is, uh, this is the broad strategy that we follow for all the brands across. All right. Thanks, Rohan. So next question is for Chan, and question is from Ramesh side. And question is, what will be initially investment for setting up e-commerce business? Over to Chan. Okay. Yeah. Um, not much. I mean, um, so the only investment that you need to make is kind of uh, building the front end of your website. Uh, which again, there are so many freelancers or developers available out there who charge as low as even like 10 k an hour. Uh, even if you you don't even have to go to a developer, like there are Shopify, for example, is a plug and play tool. So you just need to install a theme or a template and um, just like you know upload your products, upload banners and few images or say product videos. That's it, and you know your website front end is ready. Um, the only thing you will have to pay is like monthly subscription fees. Like whenever you are choosing any SaaS cloud platform, uh, you always end up paying like monthly subscription fees. But that's nothing. That's like starts at like 
what twenty nine dollar per month, which is like bare minimum eighteen, like two thousand rupees or two thousand five hundred rupees max that you have to pay. Um, some uh, you will have to invest like you know in in your Facebook ad uh, campaigns a little bit. Say uh, pay to your logistic company, payment companies. Pay, every payment gateway will charge X percentage TDF fees. So that's something which you will have to, you know, once you start getting orders, you will have to pay. And again, logistics are shipping fees. But other than that, I don't think like, you know, um, even today, if you decide to start your e-commerce store, you can get it up and running by investing a small minimal amount of what, like 20K or 25K arena. And once you start scaling up, once you start kind of spending a lot on your marketing campaigns, or your investment will increase, but at the same time, there will be good ROI. So you'll be able to cover those spends from the total kind of, you know, GMV that you are generating, total sales that you are generating. So don't like, you know, you need to like just spend the minimum amount of money uh, to get your online store up and running. So, yeah. And ROI would be really kind of, you know, always um, a, a good number. So, yeah. All right, all right. Thank you so much. So, uh, next, next question is for Gaurav. And the question is different ways to reduce RTO for better business growth. Okay. Yeah. So in order to reduce the RTOs, like first we have to understand like what exactly is the reason behind the RTOs, like uh, why the customers are refusing uh, land. Uh, the, some of the common reason why are like customers change their mind or uh, they found it cheaper somewhere else and uh, they are just ordering for fun or uh, they are uh, ordering just to take, uh, they are just, or uh, they want to take revenge because they had some bad experience in the past or they are just fraud orders. So these are some of the like basic reasons where customers place the fraud orders, uh, place the fraud orders and uh, so you have to there uh, quick uh, like tips the way you can reduce your RTO like uh, starting from like you have to uh, uh, you do your fast shipping and uh, because fast shipping is something it gives less time for the customers to uh, to choose from elsewhere so if you can sh ship it quickly so the customer also uh, gets kind of uh, uh, okay, like uh, it is going to receive me in some time, in some days or uh, in some time, and uh, they don't look for uh, uh, other options. And other is you have to keep uh, the, uh, informing the customers on various stages, like once the order has been shipped, or stages like order has been packed, or it has been picked up by the carrier, or it is in, in transit, or out for delivery, or delivered. So you have to uh, notifying. Uh, uh, on these uh, like uh, statuses and these steps so that uh, again the, it, it builds the trust between the customers and uh, customers there are, it decreases the chances of customer refusing your shipments and other is you have to blacklist uh, uh, you can blacklist those customers uh, which have which are repeat uh, offenders uh, like who has already uh, done uh, fraud orders from your website and uh, uh, you have, you have, who have done RTOs on your website who have refused in the past. So you can block those customers. And uh, other is you, whenever there is, another reason is like customers may mistakenly put their incorrect shipping address uh, while placing the order. So, uh, so in order to uh, reduce these kind of uh, RTOs, so you can uh, always have a automated NDR management, like you can send them SMS or IVR calls, or uh, you can send them uh, like uh, emails, like uh, getting collecting the correct address, or uh, if they want to reschedule the delivery, so you can uh, directly ask them instead of the carrier taking it back directly to the sender. And uh, other is you can verify the orders using some automated tools like uh, order verification, COD, IVR verifications, or uh, through SMS verifications, and uh, I think uh, and uh, there are other tools like uh, uh, ThoughtWatch by Razorway, which is based on AI and helps you uh, give you the analytics based on the past performance or the performance of the 
uh, of the uh, like uh, keep tracking the customer's behavior like how much time they have spent on the site or uh, the ip addresses used by the customers so these uh, these are the some of the ways where you can reduce your rto significantly uh, i think um, even uh, like we have seen like people reducing their rtos over even by 60 60 to 70% by these measures all right thanks gora so our next question is for rohin and question is from deepak saini uh, and uh, question is are you also helping to make products videos for marketing over to rohin yeah so uh, what we have within adobe mm -hmm. software is uh, uh, deepak that there's a automatic video creator which kind of syncs your catalog and uh, and then you will have a lot of templates and audio files to make video of any length uh obviously we recommend you what kind of length is preferred on platforms like instagram and uh, for multiple formats like insta story or a facebook video ad but uh, uh, but those are all templatized videos uh, we uh, give support in let's say creating a lifestyle video or an outdoor shoot so for that you'll have to probably get in touch with the graphic designing agencies but uh, in our opinion as long as roi is concerned uh, what we've seen is that uh, wherever let's say a product is involved uh even if it, it's a templatized video we thoroughly sit with facebook team to understand what kind of templates and uh, what kind of uh, time of the video works so as per that we try and roll out newer templates and newer audio files uh and they kind of gel with the product as well so uh, uh, there's an auto template which kind of reads the uh, color of your uh, product and as per the color of your product the background setting of that uh, uh, template is toned down so the uh, product looks very uh, let's say it's a it's a looks like a very natural shot of the product so uh, those kind of videos we have tested intensively uh, along with the graphic designing videos and we've seen uh, good results on the uh, templatized videos uh, uh, majorly for most of our brands so uh, so you can try out the video creator it's absolutely free as a part of the adobe subscription so you can test that out and uh, for other videos uh, typically you would need to get in touch with the graphic designing agencies All right, thank you, Rohan. So our next question is for Chan, and question is by when we can expect mobile app from from Shopify? Over to Chan. I I I don't think that you know uh, we'll be launching this mobile app uh, feature in the near future because again, like what whatever new features or functionalities that Shopify launches, we always take into consideration that this is being required by eighty percent of brands or businesses. who are kind of you know running their stores on shopify and what we have seen is that still the adoption of a mobile app amongst these d2c brands is quite low only when they have been running their website for almost like 5 to 6 years post which they think about launching mobile app i'll give you example of wow skin signs it's like one of the biggest um, you know sellers on amazon they run like multiple websites india as well as international on shopify and i recently like you know the founder told me that they are now launching the mobile app imagine like for for the last 5 or 6 years of their business they didn't even consider kind of you know launching mobile app because when is the right time for you to launch a mobile app you should definitely because it's high investment and at the same time you are not sure about the returns you are going to get from mobile app only when you have built a very good base of audience who is constantly continuously kind of you know um, say transacting on your website and you want to now focus on increasing your repeat purchase rate or say loyal customer base that's when you focus on kind of you know building a mobile app um so otherwise mobile website desktop website is more than enough to kind of you know reach at a certain scale second um trend which i have seen is that there are these um you know say uh, progressive web apps which are being created okay so these progressive web apps act like you it's just that you add that particular website icon onto your home screen of the mobile and whenever i click on that icon it just opens my m site so it looks like a mobile app but it's actually like the latest cached version of the mobile website which opens up so that shopify on shopify app store you will find some of these plugins which can help you kind of you know set up your pwa which is like progressive web app for your particular website um in case 
it's still like you know you are looking to build a mobile app of your website and while shopify say is not providing this feature by default um the option for you would be just install like these plug and play mobile app solutions available on our app store so there's this company called global based out of pune and they convert a website into a mobile app uh, in like just less than 10 minutes or so so it's just plug and play tool again um you can install global plugin from our app store or there is this another company tapcart which is again like you know um, um based in usa but their app is also their plugin is also available on app store a few more i think there is another company vajro based out of gujarat if i'm not wrong they also have built like a mobile app plugin on our app store so while shopify by default doesn't provide and we don't have any plans to kind of you know provide even in the next at least one year or so we have provided options like pwa these plugins which can get you up and running um in like less in less than an hour um so figure out those options uh, you know if if you are planning to launch a mobile app of your own business All right, thank you, Jan. So, next question is for Gora, and question is: Does Shipway help in choosing an efficient career to deliver product globally? Over to Gora. Uh, yes. Uh, so, in Shipway, uh, through Easy Slips, we can help you like uh, choose the efficient career, and you can uh, like choose as per as I mentioned, as per the weight or as per the zip codes. for example uh, for the look uh, if you are selling in delhi mcr you can uh, select uh, uh, like carrier hyper local carriers like dunzo or uh, uh, shadow fax for delivering the hype uh, your high, uh, delivering in the delhi mcr and for the rest of the india you can uh, always prioritize as per the uh, service types or weights like if it is greater than 10 kg so uh, you can uh, ship it through the surface and if it, it it is less than some certain uh, weight then you can ship it uh, through cargoes like blue dart or vcom express so you can prioritize and uh, you can uh, assign automate uh, assign and ship the uh, products automatically depending on your uh, depending on your uh, the performance of the carrier as well all right thanks for now next question is for rohan and question is from anamika and uh, the question is which e-commerce category is dominating these days over to rohan okay i think uh, there's a joke on social media also i think uh, uh, kirana category is doing the best right now and medical category is also doing pretty well but uh, overall what we've seen uh, a split is uh, in social media specifically ayurveda is one segment which has continued to expand very aggressively uh, we've seen a lot of fmcg brands who have gone very aggressive uh, in online sales right now so uh, right from let's say biggies of uh, rekid ben kaisers and uh, all these guys to pure online players like uh, p safe and flex life plant based proteins so whatever is building your immunity right now or whatever is helping you to probably uh, uh, stay away from covid so those categories have really picked up very fast and very aggressively but overall uh, i think uh, the trend has been uh, lifestyle products have been a rage uh, especially led by apparels and footwear uh, what we have seen is especially after covid there is a massive jump in uh, rois of these brands and uh, and these brands had earlier also continued to be one of the top spenders and uh, now i think with a lot of let's say limited uh, access to malls and uh, other stores physically a uh, lot of lot of these brands are going aggressively uh, aggressive in online space so uh, so that is one segment that has continued to be kind of an evergreen segment for online players and uh, and the ayurveda or the fmcg is picking up very fast all right thanks rohan now our next question is for uh, chan from shopify and the uh, question is how shopify can make uh, more user friendly or brands like bulk listing upload option if, uh, should be there okay um bulk list okay so um, i think this question from puneet right 
Uh, so, Puneet, uh, the way it works is that we have Shopify globally. We have a merchant frustration team, and this team constantly kind of you know captures feedback from businesses who are based all across the world, right? And um, they are constantly kind of evaluating what are those first frustrations which are being raised by maximum number of merchants who are using Shopify. And this team's spoke, this team's main goal is to just work with product teams um, across different domains to get those frustrations addressed. Um, so definitely, if you have like you know, if you feel that there's something wrong with Shopify's of uh, you know, one of the features, or if you think, uh, you know, something is not working as it's expected to work, just like, you know, reach out to our support, write to our support team, they will definitely raise a merchant frustration, which will then be kind of, you know, taken up by relevant teams in house. Um, you give example of bulk listing upload option, uh, if you're referring to kind of, you know, uploading products in bulk, that's already available. So there's the standard product CSV format which is being kind of made available to all Shopify merchants. You just download that CSV format, add your products, all the details that you have against those products and just upload that file. And it doesn't take like, you know, more than five minutes to kind of, you know, get those products uploaded via bulk uh, listing option. So if you're referring to product bulk listing, that feature is already available. Not sure, like, you know, if you have any follow-up question to this, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I can definitely kind of, you know, help you sort out the um, issue you, you are facing. All right, thank you, Sean. Now our next question is for Gaurav. And question is, my monthly orders are approx 150, but buying your small plan is almost waste for me. Please suggest some good plan for small business. So I think uh, you can reach out to our support. So I think the link is already shared. You can raise a query so our team will get back to you. All right. Uh, so, our next question is for Rohin, and question is, what would be your advice for building startup who do not have major marketing budgets, but are willing to self-run promotion ads on Instagram and Facebook? Uh, I think start small and start fast. So, go-to-market strategy should be to, uh, to go live quickly, understand what kind of uh, uh, audience segments are uh, showing interest in your products. And just be patient for a couple of months or first three months if you're a newbie, because uh, it takes that much amount of time to uh, understand what kind of pricing you want to play at, what kind of product quality are you providing, and uh, and what kind of niche in the audience segment is kind of buying or interacting with your product. So uh, keep testing with okay. uh, with ads. There are a lot of options. There are a lot of levers to play around on Facebook platform and Google platforms. So uh, uh, keep testing small in the moment, let's say you find uh, hit the right spot, you should actually scale up very aggressively. There's, so the volume is not a challenge on any of these platforms. There are enough users in every niche. And, uh, and that's, that's typically the strategy I give to everyone. All right, all right, thanks Rohan. So we are, uh, let's, uh, finish this so uh, the, for those whose uh, questions are not being answered so far so we will uh, connect them over uh, the emails and uh, we will also share the webinars record recording to the attendees within a day or two and uh, thank you so much panelists thank you so much attendees uh, for, for your time thank you so much thank you Katie, for thank you, thank you, Katie. Thanks thank you so much thank you everyone bye bye Chan. bye Karo. bye, bye.